Hello and welcome back to Vintage Gaming Memories. Thank you all for your interest in checking out this video. If this is your first time to the channel, please remember to subscribe as we continue to grow this channel each and every other day. I really do appreciate your interest. And for those of you who have already subscribed and having a return visit here, I want to thank you also once again for your continued support. So let's get right to this one. In this video, we're going to look at this handheld game brought to us by Mattel Electronics. It's called Brain Baffler and was released in 1979. And if this copper brownish tone colored game doesn't scream 1970s, then I just don't know what does. That's my first impression. I'm curious. I wonder how many of you have actually owned this game or maybe even seen this before or maybe even own it today. I've never seen this until just recently. Just curious. Comment below and let me know. I picked this up in January of this year for only $21 on eBay. And as you can see, I also have the box, which is not in the best condition, but it comes with the original packaging and instructions. So let's first take a look at the box. And as I said, you know, it's seen better days. It looks like is here you've got eight challenging word and number games in one match with with the computer or a friend well that tells me it's a one to two player game i presume you gotta love the photo of the family on the box here the wife with her ear to ear smile and a grasp the left arm of her husband kind of telling me that she's so proud of her husband's gameplay <laughs> Um, oh, we got some more photos in the back here. Oh, it looks like we got a big family photo here. Again, the, the husband and wife with the son. And it looks like the wife and the son are just so amazed at the dad's intelligence. <laughs> All right, let's see here. There's the eight games. So there's a game called Anagram. Two-player game. Looks like you want to scramble letters to guess the word. Kind of makes sense. Build a word. Also another two-player game. Add one letter at a time, then you build a word. Who does it first wins, I guess. Flash word. That's a two-player game as well. You find a word shown in the scrambled letters, but a letter changes each second. Third degree flash word. Two-player game as well. Find a word as three letters change each second, so not one. It's pretty similar to the flash word game. Copy that. Oh, the first one, the two-player game. So stop the computer and repeat the numbers last shown on the display. So that kind of it's like a memory game, it sounds like. You have to repeat the numbers that the computer shows you. Go hang. Two players fill in the blanks and guess the mystery word. Sounds a little bit like hangman, where you have to fill in the blanks to guess the word. Let's see, a concussion, a one-player game. All right, so this follow clues. And search for the four numbers generated by the computer. So it's number related. And then Concussion 2, which is a two-player game. Exactly the same as number one, except this is two players. And you compete against your opponent. All right. We'll get more into the details of this as we go further. But it takes one 9-volt battery. Or you can use an AC adapter, which is nice. All right. And oh, you know, you can see on this box cover an anagram. So S C R U L A O E. Do you all know what it is? I mean, I, at first glance, I really didn't know. So to be honest, I had to check online with a anagram solver, and it's an anagram for carousel. So <laughs> that's what that is. All right, let's look at the instructions, which are in the box. And like I said, it comes with the packaging that came, the original, from 1979. And here is the nice brown matching instructions. Kind of cool looking, I guess. One thing I noticed is it has like this cascading index inside where you can just thumb right to whatever section you want. And that's for each of the games. So that is pretty neat. We'll get more details or reference this as we go and play the games. 
let's look at the game itself okay I did give it a good cleaning so it looks pretty new I think I mean the LED display is scratch free thankfully and as for the measurements it is seven and three quarters inches across by four and a half inches deep and about one and a half inches at its tallest point on the left side you can see the AC adapter port to connect into the right side you have a power on and off switch nothing on the back and the bottom has a nice listing of instructions for all the games great convenience for that instead of having to have those instructions with you so that's a nice little guide there's your battery compartment again really nice condition for this the keys have a pl little plunger like feel when pressed um and a quick glance at these keys I see kind of a combination of the same information on the left as is on the right. So that gives you the two-player perspective. You got stop, player bonus game, stop, score, player bonus. Um, anyways, we'll get into it. So let's get the battery in and power this thing up. Okay, I've got the batteries in. I've got it propped up. Let's power this one on. And we'll play the first game, Anagrams. It says game number. It's A1 for Anagrams. So this is a game where you have to figure out a word when it's scrambled on the screen. It's a two-player game. And what it's asking now is for the person to decide of the word that they're going to create. So it's not words stored into the uh, game itself. There's no vocabulary at all. This is just me or my opponent making up words and putting it in there in an order that I type it in, in which the opponent of mine has to guess what that word is in that order. So... It's pretty, pretty interesting, unique. It's not like speak and spell where it's got a memory bank of words. I will just create any word. So it's kind of nice because you can do what you want. So let's pretend I'm the one creating the word. I have to make a word no more than eight characters. And the letters are indicated here from A to Z going across in alphabetical order, not like a standard keyboard. So let's go with games. G A. M E S and then once I've typed it in I press entry to store it and then it says go so now my opponent when he or she is ready they would press go and the clock starts and when I mean the clock there's a little clicking or ticking noise that will occur every tick of the clock is a point to that person to the person that's trying to guess the word you want to guess it in the short amount of time, so the lowest points wins is really the goal of the game. The first person that gets 999 points ends the game, and of course then means they lost. So you want to quickly figure out the word in the shortest amount of time and without using many of the helps. Because there is a help option, you can buy a letter or you can simply give up and just pass it on to the next person to do their guessing on the word you create. If you give up, it's 100 points you're sacrificing. If you buy a letter, it's 25. And if you refresh, which means once the word is scrambled up, I don't like the way it looks, I can do a refresh and it'll just refresh the letterings in a different order and then maybe that helps you or not. But that's gonna be five points to do that. I put the word games in there and I'll pretend I don't know what that word is and I'll press go. So that's how it's scrambled for me, an anagram. Let me guess. Let's just go with, and you have to use the letters on the screen. It'll go away as I press it. So if I press W, it doesn't take it away because it's not one of the letters to choose. An anagram that it shows here are the letters for me to utilize to make a word out of. So let's just pretend I'll go with um, M-A-G-E-S. And it'll make a tone after the last letter. That is not a victory tone. That means you didn't get it right. So it says go. So I can do go again. And it rearranges the letters again. So if I don't like the way it looks, I can go and do a refresh. And then press go. And it changes it again. Keep doing that. I keep adding five points. I can also buy a letter. 
and it tells me the first letter is a G. So I know it's G, so I'll say G, A, M, E, you hear the ticking? Every tick is a point, E, S. That's the victory tone, and it shows the word games, because I was correct, and I can hit the buttons for score to see my score. 127, so that's uh, accumulating the number of ticks, which is one per tick, also my refreshes, and also for me buying a letter. So that's how that goes, and it goes back and forth until someone hits 999, and then that person loses. It is pretty cool that the scoring is all tracked on the brain baffler, so that is nice, so you don't have to remember. But that's game one. Okay, this next game is called Build a Word. It's a two-player game as well, so a quick run-through on how this game goes before I turn it on, because it is kind of loud, is that what will happen is it will show two letters on the screen. The first letter stays solid. The second letter will continue to change. Now, you need to think of a word that starts with that first letter and then follow with the second letter that keeps rotating. Your opponent will also do the same, and you don't share the word because you're trying to create the word in your head before the, your opponent can figure out a word. And then once you see a word that's truly there on the screen, you stop it, and then you gain the points. It is a scoring game. You want to get the most points to win. 999 becomes the winner. You won't do it on one round. You keep going. And I think that's about it. So let's just turn this on, and we'll just get a quick round in here. And I will play as if there is an opponent next to me. So it's asking for game number. We'll go game B2. And then here you see the N is solid and the next letter is changing. So it's building the word. Now, I will pretend I'm the opponent here and with my fingers ready to go. If I hit player bonus button on either side, it will stop it. And that player gets the credit for it. So let's see. N... I and this player pressed it so now it makes an I solid and the next letter keeps changing I'll make another one N N I N well I can think of the word nine let's see and so I pressed it and I want to quickly press stop because he can press he or she could press stop as well but whoever presses stop first that's the person now is going to decide if that's truly a word, because you could put it a fake word in there or a word that's not legitimate and stop the game, but it doesn't really count because if you both don't agree on it and it's not truly a word, the person who challenges it will get all the points. But being that this is a true legitimate word, nine, I stopped it on this side. My opponent would have to agree it is. And uh, now I have to do player bonus to say I am correct. And if I was incorrect, like this was not a word, my opponent would do player bonus and he or she would get all the credit. But that is a legitimate word. I'll do player bonus. And there it goes. I get 31 points for that. My opponent got two points because they got a point for stopping it on a couple letters. And each letter that they stopped to help create the word, they got a point. But because I solved it, I got 30 points, and I also contributed one of the letters, so that's why it's 31 to 2. But that's pretty much how that one goes. Let's take a look at the third game. The third game is called Flash Word. It's a two-player game, pretty simple concept. The goal of the game is to be the first player to score 999 points. In order to do so, you need to create words. Each letter of the word you create is worth one point. And how do you create the words? Well, the computer will generate eight characters on a screen. One of those characters will keep changing every second. Once you see a word at any length that's on the screen, you stop it from changing. So once you stop it, you tell your opponent what the word is that you saw or that you can create from those letters that are frozen. And if it's a legitimate word, you get a point for every letter. Very simple. So let's play a quick round here. Let's see if I can beat myself on one round. So I will select C3, and those are the eight random characters. Also, if an asterisk is shown, that's a wild card. You can make it any letter you want. And I'm just gonna stop it 
I'm sure I can find a letter, a word. But if I find one first, I press the player bonus. If my opponent found one, then they would press it. I stopped. I have no idea. I'm sure there's a vowel in there. I can make something. So I froze it at those letters that were shown. And I have to quickly tell my opponent what word I thought I saw here. And I'm going to say, yeah, the word is year. Y-E-A-R. So that's four points. So I press the player bonus four times. Four points. Do another round. If I hit go, it will go ahead and start over just like we just saw, which each letter will randomize. If I decide to do refresh, it will use the letters that I stopped it on. So we would have to create another word with what I froze those letters on, which could be hard because maybe there's no other words you can create. You'd rather do go. But let's just do refresh for a test here. So yeah, it's not changing. I'm going to have to make a word or my opponent needs to make a word of what we see there. If we both can't find a word, we then would do go. And it just keeps changing again. So... That's pretty much it. Simple game, simple concept. Let's see here. Next game. It is called Third Degree Flash Word. It's exactly the same concept as the last game called Flash Word. It's a two-player game as well. The only thing different between this one and the last game is that instead of one letter changing every second, it is three letters changing every second. And you need to quickly find a word before your opponent does and get points for that word. So let's do a quick round. Game number four. Let's see how many letters change. As you can see, it's a whole bunch of letters changing at once. Oh, there's a wild card. I'm going to stop it. And there it is. So those are the letters I have to make a word out of. So I'm going to say J-O-Y. I'm using the wild. Well, actually, I have a Y. So three letters there. And my opponent agrees. And that's that. So pretty simple concept. Let's hit the next game. All right, for this fifth game, it is called Copy That. Finally, a one to two player game. Very simple concept game. What will happen is once I turn this on and select the game, a sequence of numbers will appear on the screen and it only holds eight characters. So the ninth number will drop the first number off and continue on. But what you're trying to do is stop the game or stop the process of the number shown on there and when you do stop it, you're challenging your opponent to repeat those numbers. So if you're playing two players, whoever stops it first is now saying to the opponent to type in those numbers that was just on the screen. If it goes over eight characters and that one falls off, you have to remember that. There's nine characters now. There's ten. There's twelve. So it can get pretty crazy. Obviously, I don't know who can remember that many after it falls off the screen, but I would guess mostly you're going to stop it with whatever you see on the screen unless you really want to challenge your opponent's memory. Now, playing it one player against the computer, you would just consistently use whatever button that you want to use. Like if I'm playing one player, I would use the left side and then just try to repeat the numbers I see on there. Um, the goal, again, is to get to 999. The first player to do that wins. If you try to guess the sequence incorrectly you lose the point. If you get it correctly, you gain a point. So it's just a one point scoring system. Let's give us a quick run. We'll do a two player run on this. Game five. It's starting to count the numbers. So see one, 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 oh, that's easy. Four ones, a two, two, a three. I'm gonna stop it there. So two, three, one. Now my opponent's gotta remember, what was that sequence? And I would say it's four ones, two, Three, one. So I got it correct. It says got it. And then if you look at the score, zero, one. That is a long ways to 999. Let's take a look at the next game. This next game, the sixth game, is called Go Hang. Pretty obvious, maybe, by the name. It's a two-player game. It's like Hangman. Uh, I am in the last game here. You don't have to power it off. You could just hit game and it'll bring you back to the beginning for the game number. Again, this is game number six. Go hang. What you do in this one is one person decides on the word that they're going to create for the other person to guess, like in Hangman. So game six, I will create a word. Of course, I don't let my opponent see what I'm typing in. I'll have the word as weather. W. I'm sorry. 
water. W A T E R. I wasn't gonna go weather, but let's make it shorter. So it's water. When I have the word I want, I press entry, and it's there. And you can see the blanks for the opponent of mine to 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 guess. They have eight tries, and if they get it correct, they get one point. And the goal is to get to nine hundred ninety nine. So that's how it goes. Uh, M wrong seven, P wrong, L wrong, A. All right, W, T, E, R, water. Great. So score. Oops, zero, one to zero, and that's how that one goes back and forth. Pretty simple, right? Let's look at the next game. All right, for the last two games, they're very similar. They're called Concussion 1 and Concussion 2. Concussion 1 is a 1-2 to player game. Concussion 2 is a 2 player game. The objective of the game is to guess the four-digit number that is generated, and the difference between the two is how it's generated. Concussion 1, the computer generates the four-digit number. Concussion 2, you or your opponent will generate it for you to guess or for he or she to guess. Now, you would think, how do you guess the number? Because it's four digits, if you're too high or too low, or how, how do you figure it out? Well, that's pretty, pretty cool how this thing works. Um, let me show you with the one-player game. So I'm going to turn this on, and we'll say seven, and it's ready to go. So now the computer has a four-digit number in mind. Here's the number keys on top. I will just type in four numbers, say two, four, six, eight. And what it's telling me here on the left, there's a number two now that shows, and to the far right, there's a zero. The two says, these are guide numbers, by the way. The two says, that is how many numbers are in the wrong places. So I have two correct numbers, but they're both in the wrong places. On the right, this tells me how many numbers I have guessed that are in the correct places. So I have none. Now, that means I do have two of them that are correct, but I just don't know which position they should be in. You would want to write this down on a piece of paper because it will clear and you want to keep track because that's the only way you're going to figure this out. I know I have two correct numbers, but I don't know what position they should be in, but they should not be in any one of these. And you keep going through it. So let me just scramble it off. Let me go uh, six, two, eight, four. So what I'll do now is do score and then I do go and I'll do six, eight, two, four. And look at that. So now I don't have any numbers. Well, the guy here said I don't have any numbers in the wrong places, but I do have two numbers in the correct places. So when I compare that with my last guess to see which ones were now changed, you know, I, it just goes on like that. And then you can kind of mark off which ones are correct and you keep going. Um, the goal is again to guess it in the least number of tries, and the lowest number of tries wins. So this is definitely a game you want to have a piece of paper because I don't remember my sequence and it's going to take me more than one try. But uh, it, you get the hang of it. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's, a, it's again, a memory game, but kind of a logic game too because you have to figure out which sequence and what numbers look correct in the position and so forth. This Mattel Electronics Brain Baffler is a pretty interesting game. I mean, it's... it's it has its challenges. It is very, I, you know, I'm going to have to say it. it is kind of intellectual where you are using your your skills on, on trying to decipher words, number sequences against your opponent. So, I, you know what? I'll take back my, my snarky comments with the pictures on the box with uh, the dad and the family just admiring him because I think you have to be pretty smart to play this. So I'll give it a thumbs up. I think it's a pretty cool game. Very Brady Bunch looking like it probably would be in their household um, <laughs> with the color scheme and all. And it's from 1979. So, you know, I'm not too far off. And just remember, keep that gaming passion from the past alive by living it today. Take care, everyone. <laughs>